So was it true that there was hail that one day? I think it was Wednesday? Yeah, there was hail. Because I didn't account for that. Congratulations, you now have put yourself in the block first. Good job. So what we'll do is we'll kind of do a brief overview of sort of the weather that had occurred. Can I see you go up the highs and lows for the days? Just go through the verification. I got a job to do now? Yes, because I have to pull everything else up and I want to be done in 30 minutes. Amen. That's the spirit. Speed round time. Wait, do you want me to share that real quick? Not yet. Not yet. We'll do that at the end. Okay. So here's a loop of base. So, all right, let's stop it for a sec. So this is basically a loop of the last seven days of the upper air dispersion at upper air observations at 500 millibars. So the key thing that occurred this week was that last, about this time last Sunday, or last Friday, a trough started developing up over uh, essentially the state of Washington and throughout the weekend it progressively got stronger. So that was a, right off the bat, we had a a pretty big weather maker that just, uh, oh, no, no, let's not go backwards. And we are going back. Anyways, there's no way I can possibly screw this up. Uh, so as you see, the front, or sorry, the trough came down, and it essentially allowed for a cold front to come down to Florida, which is pretty rare in late September. Generally, you have to wait a little bit longer for something like this to come down. But, you know, we'll take it. So more or less, that's what we had. That gave us, or that basically helped with our rising air and our, uh, and our basically our steering flow. It brought down the colder air, which you saw we got pretty cold last night, what, 34 so far? About 34, I think, was last night. It took a little while for it to come down. 36. 36. Um, my forecast was 34. Uh, so, so we sort of the, uh, so the sort of the interesting thing here is yes, we had cold air coming down, but Lake Michigan's right there. So that actually modifies the air mass and makes it warmer and moister. So at the lower levels, basically we had cold air advection basically throughout the whole week because of that trough. This is 850 millibars. And basically the take home here is that the air from Canada started flowing down, especially in the last final few days of the forecast this week. But again, if you, if I can stop it real quick, basically for most of the week, we had the wind coming basically straight out of the West. And that what that allowed for, despite there being unfavorable synoptic conditions, because basically at this point, the trough had already made, wow, well, I actually get, let's see if I can actually line this up. No, that'll just stop it. Okay. So, By the end of the week, the trough is out here. So basically all your, your um, except for me, little lobes of vorticity advection that broke off, most part, all your vorticity advection got put out here by the end of the week. Um, and we had the ridge starting to build in here with cold air streaming from Canada. So synoptically speaking, you guys will learn that that's pretty unfavorable for air to rise. And we were fairly dry. The principal water values went to down pretty low, um, below one. So synoptic, from synoptic, you would you would know that, or you will you'll learn that that's pretty unfavorable from a synoptic scale for for uh, rising motion and then the lack of moisture. However, there was still a little bit of moisture. I know split earlier in the week so said there was the not so dry dry slot, so there was lingering moisture at least until maybe about Wednesday. But we had a lot of lake enhanced uh, precipitation this week. And this is this is sort of if you go uh, and look at the forecast discussions from the uh, Grand Rapids office and the other offices in the, in the Great Lakes regions, they'll talk about this uh, lake effect. Normally you hear lake effect snow, it's probably the most common, but lake effect rain is a thing too. 
and what you would get. And this is more or less the peak of the lake effect rain season this early October. So basically, so, so basically the lake's warmer. You have the cold air coming over. A, it's still a fairly warmer lake because the water doesn't take longer to cool down. Uh, partially because of the depth of the water, partially because of the heat capacity of water. But probably more the depth. Um, so, so that's that's essentially what happened. So then you basically had these showers being enhanced by the lake, and they were pushing into uh, pushing into the coast, and sometimes making it all the way into Grand Rapids. Unfortunately, these are pretty hard showers to form to uh, forecast. This isn't like a frontal passage where it's this big scale thing and you can time it out fairly well. Uh, the showers, these these kind of showers are kind of random, so you're you can get a decent idea for the precip amount, especially with the help of the modeling solutions this week. But uh, yeah, there, there's definitely some amount of luck this week in terms of uh, whether or not a, a pretty good band hit happened to hit the airport. Uh, there was hail, as mentioned. There was some hail. They had a little bit of cape, like only about 500 to 1,000 joules of mixed layer cape. So they got a little bit more convective clouds. A little bit of hail, as previously mentioned. Uh, yeah, especially to the south, it was really rainy. So let's see if I can, real quick, see if I can just do a find a go to WPC and get a loop of the uh, of it. Um, uh, firstly, I think uh, I think Moss did a pretty good job this week. Slight, only some slight adjustments, but there's a pretty good consistency on the. Uh, on uh, the high. I think Molly did a really good job on the high. Lows were a little bit more tricky this week. If you look at the spread, there, there were, the lows were only fairly certain um, on the high, but the lows were pretty, uh, pretty much larger spread. Can I add the something really quick? Cloud cover with the rain showers, how much you're actually ready to cool. Can I add something ready. really quick, please? Like, no. for quite an interesting. Wait, let's see if I can just loop this. Are you going to let me loop it or something? No. All right. Well, we'll just do this then. I'll be the human loop. We'll start. A, let's go. We'll go 60. Yes, we can. We're just going to go. We'll start Tuesday at 60 and we'll kind of see how this so. That was our low pressure system that helped us bring in some weather, and then we went to Wednesday, another low. Where is that? Wow, that's way out here. So that, that's an interesting point, guys. You might, depending on the map you're looking at, does, does Brian actually have a question? Or is he just? No, I don't have a question, but Keith wanted to add something. Yeah, I did. It was about the moss highs. They were consistently um lower than what was actually happened because i i used that a lot in my forecast or like in my like gathering information and uh they were consistently undershot their highs like about three or four degrees for yeah, each time i always added did you notice my forecast i always added two i always added three three or four yesterday's i think um the day when it was 62 there may have been two days where it was 62 but um when I think I forecasted like 59 or 60, it ended up being like 63. And that my forecast was already like three or four higher than what the moss was saying. But yeah, yeah. It was, the lows were especially tricky though. Like you're not wrong there. Like the, especially the timing of the cold air was, was a bit tricky to pinpoint. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, there was interesting that the moss was rather constant on its air though. Um, and you gotta, and when you're looking at moss, you need to kind of figure out in general when you use it. Because, um, because I always, when I was forecasting, I would say, all right, based on the observations from the, from the day, I was either going to go on the, uh, basically what I would do is I would say, if I'm going to go on the high or low end of the guidance and then add my correction. And one of the things I did is that I took the latest or the last few um, eight triple R runs, especially if I observed cooling in the day, I would see where the, uh, I, would, I would observe the cooling 
Now I'd use the H triple R to take me to 6Z because I can get the rate of coin at 6Z. And at the temperature the her had, I would look at where that intersected the spread of the moss and followed that down to the low. And then I, then again, like I said, I thought of, I, in my analysis, I sort of made, I make, I basically what I do is I make a, mo a forecast before without models and then I go look at models. So I use a lot of what we learn in Synoptic. And that's when you begin to second guess everything <laughs> for me anyways. Oh yeah. oh yeah. No, like I legit was second guessing so much, like right up until um, like the forecasts were due. So yeah, no, I feel. Well, I said, I didn't use model that much. Um, perhaps I should have used more model. I don't know. But um, at least for the big, the big picture, I didn't use much model. So I, so I, I try to get a general idea if I need to go high or low on the, of, the, of the spread and then went in and did it and then made adjustments as I saw fit. Um, let's see, it was this Thursday, just for completion. This hasn't happened yet, so I don't know why there's a surface chart. I assume this is just the latest it has available because, well, sorry, now I got 6C today, yeah, seven, or 6C tomorrow, then yeah, my bad. I'm tired. Anyway, so this is basically, actually, let's see if I can, so this was fun, essentially, right at our forecast. So remember, this is when our forecast was due. We basically had this front stall, and then by forecast starting, it cleared the area, so that, that was fun. Uh, yeah. And looks like this thing's still trying to destroy us, Alaska. That's nice. All right, um, and that's sort of the overview of the weather. Uh, Cassie, do you have the um, all the verifications? Yeah, hold on. Give me just a minute. Sorry, I'm really quick. Yeah, I'm See, the models definitely undershot because I had 52 and I kept lowering it and lowering it based on the models. Well, I wouldn't say that. Modeling, models had some very cold temperatures for last night. For uh, max? Um, not so much for max, but you're going to see this. The models are never going to be right on. So don't expect also, how that works. I also made the mistake of looking at model averages rather than just picking my specific ones. Do not pick a specific model. That is not the best way to do that. Oh, I mean, I won't say it's not, it's, you can, I mean, there's nothing that stop you, but you're going to do a lot better looking at the whole spread. The average might not be the best, right? Because, well, what is an average? I mean, just think about what an average is. If one is doing a particular, if one model has clouds and the other one doesn't have clouds, then the average is you take the average of that. That's not going to work at all. I mean, granted, that's a rather extreme example, but that's that's yeah. That I mean, you're going to have to figure out well, why does this model not have clouds? Or you'll yeah, I didn't get into those details. Like, We're just taking one with clouds because that's the best we got because we have five minutes to do this. <laughs> yeah. But picking model of the day probably isn't the best idea because we're not at a forecast site all the time. So it's kind of, I mean, you can learn some of the biases in the models for specific sites, but you won't necessarily have enough time. Yeah. Does anyone else notice this? Why does it say 1030 instead of 930? Is it supposed to say 1030? Yeah. I noticed I if you really check the actual, um, like if you go to where if as if you use the guidance focus, it said September first for October first. Nope. So it's all screwy. That's yeah. why I was confused. I just saw this like literally just now and I got confused. Okay. That was just my random comment of the day. Yeah, I noticed that too on the uh I can't remember what it's called, but the drop down where you go and look at the actual the WX. Yeah, but just be careful playing pick a model. It's generally better. There's a reason why 
AWP in general is going towards the ensemble and away from deterministic. Anyone else have any other comments? I felt slightly bamboozled by um, day two's wind, like what do you mean? results. Cause I mean like, well, I forecasted 16 knots, um, but I, I did not expect it to just completely shatter that and go to 25 knots. I felt like that was kind of crazy. Yeah, that was, a, that was kind of a very windy day. In general, Moss doesn't do a very good job. Of wind, and I believe yeah, it's a no, three-hour yeah. average. I could be wrong, but I think Moss is only a three-hour average. Yeah, I I definitely took Split's advice and tried to like over forecast the winds, but even even on that day, like almost twenty, like ten additional knots, almost like that, I would not have. Well, there was. I was. I was. So basically, what was happening that day is that the bridge out over the southwestern states was building. So we're getting a stronger gradient with our low and the high that day. Yeah. And yeah. Do you have any advice for looking at that? Because wind is an area that I'm like sort of just following what Split said on that. I don't really know what I'm looking at. Well, if you followed what Split said on that, you actually would have done a pretty good job this week on wind. Yeah, I did, except yesterday when I didn't follow that. Job. And I, it didn't quite get 25 minutes. It was like 22, 23, I think is what USL had. No. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It was. I believe it was twenty-two. I forget. Yeah, we actually can. Are we at least to some extent? We actually can go Wait, back. Which, which day was that? Day two. Wasn't it day two? But see, if you click, um, I think it's September thirtieth. It'll say um, September first instead of October first for the following day. I think. Yeah. See, it says oh one September instead of oh one October. I don't know, man. Oh, right here. It's like, no, thank you. It does. It's not. It's not. It doesn't get to be September first. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, on that one, it's hard to tell if it's actually actually wrong or if um there's just a glitch in the code and it actually the correct data but the wrong. Graphic. I think it's correct, but I mean, I have no real way of knowing that other than that. I loved using what is it, USL? Yeah, although I, I loved, last year I, I think using USL that last year. Garbage numbers I love I thought it was spot on for wind and precip, or at least it gave a good estimation at precip. Like it wasn't like the best, like to just I, take it face I, I've value. Seen some pretty wild stuff, to be honest. No, same, same. I remember in previous years, it's, it's been a bit crazy, but it is definitely a good place if you're like uncertain for wins. I forgot that this existed this whole week, so explains a little bit why my wins were undershot. But um, but Kelly, the answer more your question is, um, is sort of pay attention to the big, to at least the big feature big features first for the wind and, um, and then drill down because there's also local effects that can affect it too. Okay yeah I didn't get too small scale like split it in his powerpoint but uh, or local scale sorry but yeah definitely. Well I mean in theory you're supposed to spend the least amount of time up high and most of your time down low at least in theory. Any more comments? Just be glad we're not doing a blooper reel. <laughs> I'm just watching my ranking drop slowly. I was doing so well today, and now the winds are picking up. So, are they really? I hope so. They're at 11 right now. Yeah, it's good for you, bad for me, because I way undershot it. This is the only day that I didn't follow splits. Yeah, I think it's an 11. I hope they stay Last at 11. I saw 12, I think. Until it says 11. Seven. 
Uh, did you put, did you put, oh, Matt put 10. That's fine. Yeah, All right. Well, I put 10. I don't want them to go any higher. Right on it. Me neither. Yeah, for now. Right now. Yeah. So, don't I, know how I that wanna, happened. I want to make a comment on this forecast. Because, <laughs> so the reason why I put rain is because there were, at time of the time of our forecast, there were showers on the other coast. And the HRRR was hinting at a shot of showers on the field at 60. So there was definitely a risk of precip last night. Looks like I think there was definitely a percentage by the office too. The the National Weather Service office, I think, put a, a precip right. percentage. So honestly, for guys, it too. If, you, if you need to hedge your bets, it's not a bad thing to throw in a small amount of precip. Who's here? Anna's entered the waiting room. Anna, you're a little bit late, but okay. There she comes. I got her. Um, random question, but next to the splits, like, thing, I don't know what it's called, there's a G randomly, and like, guidance. where, what is that for? Guidance. That means guidance. Oh, okay. It's if you didn't forecast, you hit the button for guidance, you don't have time to show it gives you something. The first time you use guidance, it doesn't give you a penalty, but after that, it does. And if you use climo, you get a penalty right off the bat, which is equal to climo. Okay. C's are climos and the G's are guidances. Hi, Anna. Welcome to the blooper reel. Hi, Anna. Hi, guys. Anyways, any more, any more comments? Anna, you just got here. Do you want to say anything? Um, can you hear me or no? Yeah, we can hear you good enough. Okay. Um, the only comment I have is that I am in position 420 because I'm in I'm from Colorado. You know what I'll take. And also, I really suck at this. <laughs> I remember below you, Anna, so we're doing it. We're good today, we're here. Can I just say yeah, no, I have that, no, no idea how I'm up at 384? I was just I was doing, doing so well. Listen, I was doing blind guesswork is how I got there. Literally blind guesswork. Hey, Matt. Matt. Yeah. The atmosphere yeah. will hunt you down and make you cool. Basically, bow at its throne. Okay. Next week, the your karma will come back into balance. It'll stabilize itself. Sweet. Or it's just skew the other way. I thought that was his foot for a second. It's the first city, too, so I don't think it's a. I, I don't think you get lucky for every other city. Oh, Some I won't. Are, uh, I, I absolutely won't. And this will never happen again. I'll never be this high on the list again. Take the screenshots now while you can. Exactly. Post them everywhere. Have proof or didn't happen. <laughs> anyway, so honestly, I think we had a pretty decent first week. We got some really interesting weather right off the bat. Somehow, modeling is actually somewhat consistent, which is shocking. Oh, there will be times where there's lines going completely other directions for every model the whole week, and you're like, yeah, all right, let's figure this out. So if, you're, if you've taken more, some of the more advanced classes like Synoptic, you're going to want to use it to, your, to its full potential. Use full theory. Because you're gonna, we're gonna, because you're gonna be able to, to, especially in the short term, you're gonna be able to get a lot more information out of using theory. And the theory can help guide you and what to look at in the models. Anything else? <clears throat> okay. Our seniors are a little quiet. I know. Kate's been loud. I've been vocal. Excuse you. I don't know if you guys <gasps> Excuse me. Our freshman has been dead silent. Good golly. I was yeah. <laughs> calling you well, out. I'm a, little, I'm a little upset about my precip forecast for this first week, but. Um, I expect to get better as the weeks go by. 
Fair enough, I guess. I don't know if I, like, it was just lucky this week or what I did right. So I'm scared of going downhill, basically. <laughs> but I already am going into the weekend. That happens. <laughs> In many ways. Okay. Any other comments? Concerns? Hallucinations? Come on, I just told the doctor all can be down here. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna, oh, wow, we're right on the 730 mark, too. That's impressive. All right, going once, going twice, sold. Okay, we will do this again next week, but at five o'clock for those who wanted it earlier, we just had prior engagements with that. It will be earlier next week. And I will send a Zoom link out and I'll make a recurring event. So it'll be the same Zoom link for the rest of the year. For this week, not for meetings that's a different zoom link our meetings wednesday don't forget people too i'm just gonna put a plug out there you want to see me be exhausted and ramble about tornadoes come to our meeting oh that sounds fun yeah i'm definitely ready for that <laughs> the graphics may or may not be made less than 12 hours before the event no promises that's you the best way to make graphics huh I said that's the best way to make graphics. Yeah. My physics prof today made the graphics for our lecture today in paint before class was going on. on that's the how board. you do it. That's how you do it. Not some professional grade artwork there. You should frame it. <laughs> um, I'll send the recording out too for anyone who wants to rewatch it. Or why would you want to rewatch this? I don't this? know why we want to rewatch it. Why would you watch this? <laughs> But I'll send the recording out too at some point and put it on YouTube. And why would you post this to the internet? Why not? The because the internet is fun. <laughs> See, he gets me. But why would you want to watch this in my ramblings? I don't know. You don't know what the internet wants to watch. <laughs> Fair, and it terrifies me what it wants to watch usually. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to end this before this goes downhill quickly. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.